Hello everyone, welcome back to Decidedly Neapolitan. My name is Pixorus and today I'm doing a bit of everything really. I've got myself a manulin pickaxe head because people <laughs> already are telling me in the comments to get some manulin on the go and the mining speed for this right here is 17 and that has like a basic mining speed of 9 so I'm pretty sure that's going to do us pretty well in terms of mining for the future. What do I need from here? I need paper, don't I? I need paper for the tool bindings. If I could remember where I put this stuff that would be fantastic. There it is. Cool, so let's grab a bit of that. I don't think I'll need that much at all but I figured it was best to do that. Yeah, tool binding pattern here. Head into the part builder and Yes, one paper binding only costs one paper. That makes a lot of sense. So let's head into our tool forge, find pickaxe, and assemble this beast. And this is going to be pretty incredible from what I can tell. It has the, a mining level of manual in, so it can mine itself, which is always handy. And once we get a little bit more stuff on this, I reckon we can do a lot with it. So it's got four modifiers. We can throw a bunch of redstone and stuff on here. I'm pretty much going to make it the same as I made Pendragon. I'm going to add a diamond, I'm going to add some reinforcement if I can, but I don't think you'll really need to do that much. Haste is going to be the main thing because I just want it for the speed. I don't have a huge amount of redstone, so I'll probably end up having to get a little bit more of that, which is fine because I'm not really using redstone for much else. Having said that, I do want to explore a bit more of industrial craft today. So I figured that would be a good plan. I even have a little checklist written out in front of me, the stuff I want to do, but this right now is taking priority because this is going to be pretty awesome. Never building a base in a swamp again. You can hear that, can't you? The stupid... See, that's already at level 13. So we can get a few more redstone on this. Just upgrade the haste level even more level 18 so that's already faster than what we have we could even add more redstone to it if we wanted to i think let's work it with a diamond and oh for goodness sake let's go and kill that slime it's doing my head in come on oh it's night time as well that'd be why that'd be why well let's let's take a sleep a little bit so the skeleton shooting over my head can go away and yeah you are getting it right now son I've had enough of you. I don't care that I'm taking out the smaller ones with a ridiculously OP sword. <laughs> right, let's leave all of them to drown and just make sure that this guy gets what's coming to him as well. The more I look at the water wheel thing, the more I'm liking it now. And I want to thank everybody for their kind words about last week's episode, because I was really worried that me just wandering around in the landscape wasn't going to be all that interesting for people, but everybody seemed to be fine with that. It's, it's kind of cool, because I guess I am... Oh, if I could get out of this waterfall, that would be fantastic. I am a newcomer to modded stuff in general, and so maybe some of the sense of wonder I feel from exploring this landscape which looks completely different to what I'm used to in vanilla Minecraft that kind of like rubs off on people I guess and they kind of they get caught up in my excitement for it at least that's what I hope happens and you guys seem to like it so I won't feel too bad about doing episodes like that in the future but for today I think we're going to be making progress I mean we've already made a bit of progress we've already got ourselves a lovely new pickaxe and what was I even doing up there? I was just killing the slime, wasn't I? I need diamond. Where is my diamond? It's in the diamond chest? No, it's in the precious materials chest I haven't labelled yet. Of course it is, right. And there's a bit more redstone in there as well, cool. So we should have enough to do what I want to do with industrial craft today. Let's throw down some diamond, add a bit of durability. Fantastic. And there's extra stuff I can add to add more modifiers to that if I want to. So I could pretty much expand it exponentially. But today we're going to be working on this area. This is industrial craft and you can see I've stopped up this with some darkwood planks because I wanted to have a cable running down from the surface to there. Because I mentioned this on a previous live stream. Oh, bit of lag from the server there, not sure what that's about. I mentioned this on a previous live stream, but we are going to be building with the lily pad theme for this. 
and I want to have the place solar powered because solar seems like a pretty efficient way of doing things. Let's grab a bit of water while we're up here and then we can put all of this stuff back because I won't be needing it. won't even be needing this pickaxe for a little while, but the whole deal with this area is that I've got this lily pad here and I want to build more of these flowers with solar panels kind of nested in them, I guess. And I have one solar panel right now, which is not going to provide a huge amount of power, but it's going to provide a little bit. And that is enough to get us started, at least as far as industrial craft goes. Let's throw these back in here and let's put the slime in here as well, because it's vaguely Tinkers related, this chest here. Oh, I didn't name this one as well. I didn't name the pickaxe, so we will definitely have to do that. This pickaxe is going to be howl if i can actually get it to be there there you go yes because the other ones are pendragon and jenkins which is like i said in the last episode a reference to howl's moving castle so i feel like the name howl is kind of appropriate for this one it's like the perfect form of the pickaxe but i'm going to be stashing him in here because i'm not going to use him he's going to hang out in there with jenkins and yeah i have a ton of charcoal now because gathering those trees in the last episode kind of made me think how about i use charcoal for this generator so we can use the machines for now. It does take charcoal, right? I assume it does. I've got a bit of energy buffered in there waiting to be used and I would probably end up using the macerator to get some more coal dust. So how about we do that now? Because, oh, I've got some iron dust left in there as well. Um, will it work with charcoal? Will it macerate charcoal for me? Or will that come out as charcoal dust specifically? Let's find out and let's let's leave a bit of energy in there just in case and I guess we can go and smell this over here. I also do want to get started on an electric furnace just so I can go full industrial craft with everything and actually get some of this stuff smelting in an automated way because you can automate stuff with hoppers and so forth but I think it's kind of fun to do it in the in the world of the mod if you like so we'll get some transport pipes on the go we'll get everything going into chests and being a little bit more organized that kind of thing that is the plan but for today we need to start by making a few tin cables now i do have some tin here yes i do fantastic because we're going to be using tin a lot for moving some stuff around now how do i cut this up oh i need to turn it into plates first don't i yeah a little bit rusty on all of this stuff right now so I've got one tin cable there, fantastic. I've been reading up a little bit on the Industrial Craft Wiki and finding out where I need to pay attention to some stuff. And that's the reason I've moved around some of the machinery in here because I found out that if you... I think it's different for the different types of cable, but if you put machines too far away from things, they start to lose a little bit of power. They become less efficient because your power out from here is being lost in the amount of cable that you're using so it's pretty important to keep that under control and to that end I've moved the extractor a little bit closer to the generator. Okay so we get charcoal dust which seems to be a railcraft thing. I'm not sure if I can use that in my in my solar panels which is kind of what I need the coal dust for so for now I will probably just chill and make sure I use coal dust. So let's grab a bunch of tin cable while we can and the next thing I want to be making is a bat box. I'm going to get away from the machines because they're a little bit loud but we can look up bat box in here. Bat box. Da -na 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 bat box. Okay that one seems to have no storage in it. What is the difference? Is there a difference? Is this just a weird kind of glitchy thing they seem pretty similar not gonna lie they seem like they're pretty similar so what do we need for the re batteries we need tin cable and tin casing that's why i'm making all of this tin stuff we can hammer out some more casing i think to do that you just need to hammer stuff out twice right do it like that yes cool okay so we can make a bunch of batteries and we can go back to the crafting station up here i do need to get a few more of these around the place just so i'm not completely losing it running around trying to find it every time so we need three batteries so i'll need to hammer out a little bit more tin i may as well just use all of that because we're going to be using it for other stuff in any case there we go some more tin casings and i guess batteries are one of those things that you need pretty much all the time so no problem in making a few of them while we're here there we go right so we've got five of those now so that should be enough for the bat box in terms of the battery and then all we need is some wood fantastic i have a ton of wood now 
which is very, very useful. Got some planks ready. Let's let's do this. Here we go. We got three batteries in there. We've got three wood planks, one either side up top there, and a tin cable. Boom. Bat box. Okay, so I guess I guess it's like a a thing where it's like it's got two states, it's got fully charged and it's got no charge, and they're both kind of the same. Achievement get. Good work. Okay, so this bat box is gonna go up here. And I'm th I think, according to the wiki, it has like an input and an output, which the rest of these machines don't seem to have. I'm not sure if that is still the case. So it'd be interesting to see how this all works. But basically, I want to stash the bat box up here, where that plank of wood is, and then the cable down from the surface is going to channel all the power from our solar panel, which I'm going to be putting up there, and probably connecting with some more of this tin cable. If you saw the live stream that we were on a little while ago when Kane and I were live streaming from Decidedly Neapolitan, you will have seen that we kind of discussed having the the cables sprout out of the ground as or out of the water over here, kind of as like stalks for the plants. And I think like aesthetically, that's going to turn out really nice looking. So I wonder if we can actually have the power input come from here now it's gonna it's gonna be difficult placing this stuff so i might actually dry out this area quickly and then yeah we can do stuff like this because otherwise i'm just going to be floundering around in the water for a while there we go and then the solar panel is going to go on the top of here like this and then hopefully as this slowly gathers energy i'm not sure what you want to put in there do you want to put a battery in there is that how it works? I don't think it does. So I might have to look up a little bit more about how solar panels work before this actually gets going. But I don't know if we can input into the bat box from above or if that has to be from the side. Because if it's from the side, it's not a problem. We can always just... Oh no, it is. It's getting power in. Fantastic. And that's just like a steady trickle of power that's coming in. And it can store a bunch. Redstone behavior, armor. Interesting. It's showing me what my armor is. So maybe if I'm if I'm hooked up to a bat box, I can recharge some armor if it's like powered armor. I'm guessing that's what you do. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> but now this bat box is going to be charging on a regular basis when it's daytime. And I try and sleep on this server quite a lot when I can, because that's how I make sure slimes don't spawn around my swamp all the time. So that's going to be good. We're going to get some power flowing in constantly and that will be able to power the machines a little bit and I think what you can do is you can make solar arrays which are basically a bunch of solar panels in a single block which allows them to provide a lot more power because if you want to power anything substantially this amount of power trickling in all the time is not going to be that easy to do that with so let's let's see what we can do do these cables talk to each other if I do tin cable there okay so I can get the power to it from there interesting right so now the question is do I, I i may as well use up the rest of the stuff in this generator and then move the generator we've got some more coal dust so we can make another solar panel okay i'm thinking out loud here i'm trying to get myself straight here but then i think what we can probably do now that we know that that is at least coming in we can work on some more solar panels which if we get solar panels, solar pan like this, we need glass, we need more electronic circuits, and we need another generator. So I could even take down this generator once we've used it all up. Let's macerate some more coal dust because we'll need that for the solar panels. And I'll be making a few of them. And then hopefully they might even replace the need for the generator entirely. Because I don't want to just be burning through all of my supply of coal. Especially if you need coal dust for other recipes. And I guess I can make charcoal now. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So let's come back up here while that is going. And I want to turn this over here into a lily pad. And that's going to be a really, really neat design, I think. So let's let's at least bridge out over here so I can <laughs> so I can stand up here and not be bobbing up and down in the water all the time. And we'll place wedge slopes around it like this. And this is just purely so I can get them in the right kind of place. You want to put wedge slopes like that as well, but they need to be the other kind. Where if I scroll through them like this, I can get them. Yes, oblique slopes. There you go. So we'll put those in here. 
Okay, let's get the carpenter's hammer. It's going to be a lot more easy with the hammer. One more there, one there. Let's grow a jacaranda sapling. Harvest some leaves from that, and then we can use that as the decoration for the lily pad. This is the kind of thing that now I'm kind of in the swing of it with modded stuff. This is the kind of thing that really appeals to me is finding ways. Where have I got all of my iron? <laughs> it's in here. Finding ways of making modded stuff look pretty and look detailed. And a lot of it is quite pretty to begin with. I don't want to malign modded stuff for what it is but I just want to find ways of making it look aesthetically interesting, which, to be fair, industrial craft machines often aren't, really. They're just there, like, to do the job. They're kind of there as machinery. There we go. Let's get some purple leaves up in here. That will be awesome. And lumber axe. Still got it on me. Fantastic. Chop down the tree. And... I got a few more saplings from that. This is an interesting behavior of shears that I have not seen before. And I think it may be something to do with the mod, or maybe it's even to do with the trees I'm cutting down. But when I shear stuff, when I shear leaves, I get a lot of leaves, but occasionally I'll get a sapling as well. Is that meant to happen? Is that a thing? Is that a bug with some of the mods, or is that actually a feature? Because that's kind of cool if it is. I do like that as, a, as a, an idea. Because, yeah, you, I mean, you can always tear up the leaves later if you want the saplings, but that's a good way to do it, I think. Right, I'm going to have to get a regular axe. <laughs> I've had enough of using this lumber axe and then accidentally knocking down a bunch of stuff that I've built. So <laughs> let me build a, another axe real quick. And we can get rid of the wood around there and see if this actually holds up. See, I've done them in still water. I've built the... I built the wires and stuff in still water, but I'm not sure how they react to water flow. So that is going to be an interesting test, actually. Hopefully the flowing water won't disturb them. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so it's not actually going to move the cables. That's fantastic. That's pretty much exactly what I wanted. Because then the cables can just sit there being cool, looking like the stem of this flower. Oh, this is working so well. I'm really happy with that. I am genuinely really, really happy with that. I think that's fantastic. Oh, and I can top up with air there too. Cool, right, <laughs> this is gonna take me a couple of seconds just to get rid of the wood around here, but once we step back and admire this, I think you guys will agree this is going to look amazing. All right, so the water blocks around the outside aren't the prettiest. But look at that, that is, that is, a, that is a power flower. <laughs> that is a flower of power and, oh. That is a weird glitch. See how the particles are turning up underneath the water? That is strange. <laughs> Fix it, B-Ran. No, I'm kidding. It's, it seems... Yeah, I'm just going to be fascinated by that now, from now on. But yeah. I really, really like that. I like it a lot. And we can get some... We could even get some more solar, solar panels kind of on the same flower, but I would love to just make a lot of these little ones around here, just all feeding into battery boxes and providing us with industrial craft energy that would be super super cool and do we have any tin cables left or did i use them all for crafting i think i used them all for crafting but once we hook this up we can get rid of this generator we can do that now in fact and it is going to drop the generator this time good i get so apprehensive every time i use that wrench after we found out that it basically destroys your machines 20 percent of the time <laughs> So yeah, we can stash that in there and we can use that to make some more solar panels and then we'll have a constant inflow of energy. That's gonna be great. Right, let's let's insulate some more tin cable while we can because I've got a little bit more of it in here. And then let's at least get the power from the bat box feeding into the machines if we want it to. I'm gonna have to reorganize these machines a little bit again, but hopefully the bat box should provide enough power that it will do the job. So that is awesome. That is very, very cool. Let's stash the tin cables away. And the last thing I wanted to do was go back to that island and fight the King Slime. If he's still there. I don't know if he's still going to be there. But I definitely wanted to do that in this episode because Jeff clued me up about it in the comments of the last episode. Because Jeff plays modded a little bit and he's he knows his stuff. And he said, go fight the King Slime. He's 
super easy to fight and he has cool drops. So we're going to do that now. Hopefully it will still be there. Do I need to drop off anything else in here or is it all just... Okay, tin cable can go back in here. I've got a ton of jacaranda leaves now which I will stash over here in one of these. Which one is it? It's that one. This is kind of my nature chest right now. It's got bees and stuff in it and piles of ashes which I found you can reform into charcoal as well because you get the, the I got these from those ash blocks that were in the nether in a 9x9 nine nine, they make charcoal which is super handy and I might end up using that at some point but I don't know if there's a way you can necessarily like farm the ashes I don't know if they're used for any other recipes so I'm not going to worry about that too much right now let's stash the rubber and the coal dust in here as well while I think of it because I will definitely need to come back to that and we'll see if the charcoal dust can be used for anything as well right Right, right, right. Get the wooden stuff in here. Yeah, I'm, I've kind of got saplings and stuff in here as well. And I don't know how you can grow hellbark saplings because I haven't been able to grow them at all. Are they just grown in the nether? Let me know. If you guys are clued up about that stuff, let me know in the comments because that's going to be slightly useful information for me in future. Now, what do we need? I'm going to take some dirt with me so I can pillar up to that island. I feel like that's probably going to be the best plan. Do I have any more? I, I have my dirt chest 9000. I can use that. Yes, I'll take a ton of dirt just in case I have difficulty getting up there. And I reckon we've got the tools we need to take him on. I've only got one arrow right now. So how about we get some more arrows? I don't know if I have any in my mob drops chest. I don't. Okay. Okay, so we'll need to grab some flint from somewhere. Do I not have any flint? Where the flint? Where did I put the flint? It's possible that I used up all the flint for my macerator. Okay, so we're only going to be able to shoot him once unless I bring the crossbow with me. Now there's an idea. There's an idea. Let's bring that and let's bring a ton of bolts. I really made a lot more bolts than I needed to. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious how many I made, but there you go. Let's stash the axe and the lumber axe in here. Probably won't need those. Um signs and stuff can go I don't know somewhere let's put them in here and then we'll put the carpenter stuff up here put the slime and the tinkers well the paper and stuff in the tinkers chest let's leave the carpenter's hammer in there as well I will reorganize all of this stuff later <laughs> I'll come back and do it and it's getting night time so where did I just place a dirt block where did I do that did I just place a dirt block under the lily pad through that bed Finding all the glitches in the modded server today. This is kind of fun. Um, carpenter's stuff can go in here. Let's stash the shears in there as well. Make sure we've got the crossbow bolts with us. And okay, let's go fight a slime. If this is, if this is a, a massive anticlimax now, if he's not there when I get to the island, that's going to be hilarious. But it looks like there's a. I think that over there is another slime island. Look at me trying to zoom in with Optifine. It's not working because we have fast craft on this one. I think. I hear a slime, it's not the slime, but there's two of them. <laughs> I will have more slime on this server than I will ever need on any server ever, so I'm going to just skip by these guys. <laughs> really don't need to worry about them too much. I need to work out what I'm going to do with my levels as well, because I've got an enchanted set of bronze armor, which is not exactly going to be the best. It's not going to last me forever, but then finding diamonds on this server has been a little bit difficult. Not that I've had too much trouble finding them but just in terms of strip mining everywhere and stuff is kind of the best way to do it i'm fairly certain that you don't get diamonds from much else in modded it's still going to be necessary to actually get well the boss bar is here so we at least have a king slime if not the king slime and i think i just spotted one of the blue guys who i missed out on fighting last time around so you sonny are going down now i'm sure you're not the king slime right you're just a blue guy Oh, you are the King Slime. How did you get down here? I thought you were going to be up on that island. <laughs> well, I guess you are really easy to kill. Whoa, hi. All right, you've got a bit of bite in you. Let's shoot you with a crossbow. How about that? <laughs> and reload. Yeah, they're kind of slow. Slimes are not the best in water, so he's out of his natural environment. Here, does he split? Oh, my word, he splits into all kinds of tiny guys. And what is this? This is a yellow heart thing, isn't it? And these guys are going to be a little bit tougher than your average green slime, so let's take them out now. And they all drop blue slime. Interesting. I wonder if you can use that for anything fun. Wow. 
<laughs> Did they all just drown? <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of them just drowned. Awesome. So, we have blue slime. It smells terrible if you have nothing else to eat. You can eat it? Interesting. Right. So this is this is gelatinous slime. Gelatinous. Can I use this for anything cool? Making leads, making controller circuits for railcraft. Okay, it's a railcraft thing. Interesting. And water tank siding. And then stickers. Okay, <laughs> cool. Oh, and you can make name tags in this as well. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Right, well, apparently there's another king slime. So let's at least head up to that slime island because... I imagine there's going to be another one up there, and I really want to see what it looks like up there, because I've not been up to one of these yet. I feel like that would be a good way to end this episode, from the top of the slime island. So let's get up. I don't know if I can get up to the top of one of these trees very easily, if that would... If I can climb up the moss or something. Just to give myself a bit of a head start, but I guess pillaring up is probably going to be the most effective thing to do. Let's make sure the crossbow is reloaded first. There we go. <laughs> I have on occasion been caught out by the fact that the crossbow didn't reload because I wasn't holding it in my hand at the time. So, best to be prepared for these kind of things, I guess. Wow, this is a long way up. I really hope he doesn't just immediately knock me off this island because then if I didn't fall in this lake here, which really looks quite nice from above, I like that a lot. <laughs> Considering relocating my lily pad to this area, I've put a little bit too much work into it now, but... At least I would avoid having green slime around everywhere. Although these, these king slimes respawning constantly might give me a little bit of trouble. Who knows? Yep, good thing I brought... Oh, I... Oh, it's doing the... There we go. <laughs> it's doing that thing that Inventory Tweaks does when it refills the inventory in your hotbar with blocks from your inventory. But it seems to take a while. Wow, those are cool. I like that block. That's a nice block. I can hear him can hear him right now. What kind of block is this? Is this a shovelable thing? It's a shovelable thing. Blue slime dirt. Hello. And slimy grass as well. Maybe that's a silk touch thing? Don't know. Right. Better take this a little careful. I can hear a lot of them, actually. Oh, they're all just chilling in this pool. What is this? Congealed purple slime? And you can bounce on it too. Awesome. Right. And these are new... Oh, these are going to look great in the lily pad. Slimy leaves. Doesn't have any, like, trunks, though. That's weird. It's just like a little canopy kind of thing. All right. Well, I don't really feel any need to kill these guys right now. They're just chilling. And to be honest, they're probably drowning. So <laughs> they're just, just about killing themselves. Yeah, there you go. Right. Well, I'm going to end the episode here. <laughs> from this wonderful slimy place that I've just discovered. Thank you very much for watching this episode. My name has been Pixel Riffs, and today's episode has been brought to you by the kind Patreon donation of Eric Lee. So thank you so much for supporting me, Eric. If you want to go the extra mile and support me via Patreon, you can head over to patreon.com slash pixelriffs and do that. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Separated from the mainland because of some sort of earthquake in the past and that's why they built this bridge and that's why the bridge is kind of cracked open that's interesting i like that as a storyline earthquake town